तो अगर सोको टू माई चैनल सो दिस इज द पार्ट वन ऑफ आर इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट डिवाइसेज कोर्सेज सो दिस वीडियो इज रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू गैस बिकॉज दिस इज द ओम स्लो एंड ओम स्लो इज द रूट एंड द बेसिक एंड द एलिमेंट्री नॉलेज दैट एवरी ऑफ यू नो इफ यू आर एस एस सी लेवल एच एस सी लेवल और इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट और ए लेवल ओ लेवल वॉट एवर यू आर यू हैव टू बिगिन विद दिस रूल विच इज वीजिकल्स टू आई आर विच इज एक्चुअल द ओम स्लो एंड इट इज इम्पेंटेड इन एटीन ट्वेंटी सेवन विच इज ऑलमोस्ट टू हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड वॉट ओम सेज इज द करेंट आई वी डू नॉट इज एज आई एंड इज यून इट इज एम्पियर ओके दैट पासिस थ्रू ए कंडक्टर इट कैन बी रेजिस्टर इट कैन बी कैपेसिटर इट कैन बी इंडक्टर सो इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड दिस दिस इज द इंडक्टर दिस इज एक्चुअली नोन एज क्वाइल ऑल्सो इफ यू डोंट नो दिस इंडक्टर्स आर देयर इन द इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर्स सो दैट वी कैन कन्वर्ट इट इन टू ए इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एंड दैट्स ऑल द मोटर वर्क एंड इट प्रोटेक्ट्स सो इट कैन बी इंडक्टर्स इट कैन बी कैपेसिटर एज यू नो देर इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड एनी इलेक्ट्रिकल सर्किट और इफ यू सी एनी कैंड ऑफ मदर बोर्ड्स और इन सर्किट बोर्ड्स देर विल बी सींग ए लॉट ऑफ कैपेसिटर्स देयर दैट टू होल्ड सम इलेक्ट्रिक चर्स फॉर सम टाइम्स so this is really important to hold some amount of charge uh, in the circuit okay or on this com electrical component so this is also important and the resistor is actually which is actually resisting something from passing current okay as you know this is like this this is the most useful thing that you understand current either passes through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage okay voltage source okay so it is actually battery so the voltage source can be battery dc power source anything i'm not talking about ac power source here because this is completely different topic so this is actually dc power source and this is the it and the voltage source can be given from dc power source battery all the thing means that if you give a higher input voltage from battery or any output source then the current that is flowing between those two points on the conductor would be higher it means that v is equals to ir so if i just write it here the main formula that he gives is actually v is equals to i r where i is the amount of current that is flowing through this resistor capacitor or conductor and v is the voltage source or the dc power supply or battery source the amount of voltage that it is given to it okay so it is proportional if the resistor is constant okay so it you have to make sure that the r is constant here okay so if r is constant we can write v it is proportional to i so this is the main formula the current passes through this point and our resistor suppose this is our resistor and it has two point a point and b point okay and it is 5 ohm resistor suppose and the current is passing from this this is a plus point and this is minus point because current is going from left to right suppose and another voltage source we have suppose this is plus this is minus this is the battery and i just add it to this and the current that is passing from this to point is proportional to the amount of voltage that i have given suppose the voltage that i have given is 10 volt okay so it says this is v and this is r so v and r is given we can find the i so let's find it so our v is given which is 10 volt our resistor is given which is 5 ohm and this is the unit of the resistor and we need to find the current the, the current is not given here so we need to find what amount of current is going through this so see how useful it is we can find the amount of current using this um, ohm's law that's why it is so important we need to find the i is equals to what so according to the law we know we know the v is equals to ir so we can write it like this i is equals to v by r and v the amount of voltage is 10 divided by total resistor or there is only one resistor here if we have multiple we need to add those thing we will see all those things later and just this is the resistor which is 5 so if i just calculate 2 ampere so 2 ampere is current is flowing through this so we know the unknown value of the current is flowing through this circuit in this loop easily using the ohm's law so this is one of the most important and the vital thing that you have to use in different kind of thing let's try to just figure it out the how it is working so perfectly so if the r is constant the v is proportional to i so how it is okay now we'll increase the value of v which is suppose it is 10 20 volt here then this equation would be v is equals to would be 20 divided by r as we are finding i and v divided by r v is actually 20 suppose instead of 20 here it would be 20 i am increasing the value of the input voltage 
okay and I'm just keeping this resistor as it is it is constant I don't want to change it as you can see it is constant I don't want to change this value I just want to increase the value of the voltage so it says that from the equation amount of voltage that will give the same proportional amount of current would be there it means then if you increase the value of the voltage the current there would be a huge amount of current would be flowed proportionally okay so if I pass 20 volt across this 5 ohm resistor I get the current 2 ampere okay this amount of current is flowing I'm increasing the value of the voltage if I increase the voltage the current will also should increase okay so it is if we just calculate is 4 times 5 is 20 so 4 ampere so here you can see 2 times jump okay if I increase the voltage 2 times from 10 to 20 it is 2 times and the current is also increased 2 times 2 to 4 which is also 2 times so they are completely masked properly okay if you increase to 3 times which is 30 volt now 20 10 to 30 which is 3 times so let me calculate it this is 30 and the resistor result would be 5 and let's see how is the current the current is now 6 ampere it is increased a lot like from 2 to 6 which is 3 times increase okay so 3 times increase in current okay for 3 times the voltage increase from 10 to 30 is this 3 times voltage increase from 2 ampere to 6 ampere this is also 3 times increase so it is equal V is proportional to I this is proved now I want to prove this law which is if suppose I is this current is flowing is proportional to inverse relation it is inverse related to the resistance it means that i proportional to one one inverse r it means that it and you should to make sure that v is constant here okay so this is the thing that we're going to prove v would be inverse relation to r so how we can do that so we need to just draw some circuit here this is a voltage source suppose this is 5 volt and here i'm drawing a circuit here 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 and these two things okay suppose like that and this is 10 ohm resistor and this is 20 ohm resistor this is 20 ohm resistor and this 5 voltage is applied and now the current is flowing through this direction suppose this is i and it is going from this and there would be some voltage drop across this to resistor and also when the current reach at this point the current would be divided i talked about i will talk about it more on the current divider rule and voltage divider rule more in depth so make sure you watch my second video as well where i talk where i will be talking about this this is suppose i2 and this is i1 because as you can see this is in series so this 10 ohm resistor is in series across this voltage and the current is flowing through this i current and now the current is divided across two different route as you can see these two things are parallel so this is how we understand this is the parallel circuit and the series circuit series is actually this series if there is no resistor here on the one resistor this is the series and but as you can see the current is divided across these two it means it is parallel okay so here in this simple circuit this 10 ohm resistor is in series but we also have parallel so we need to just calculate it properly calculate this parallel circuit we need to use some formula okay and the formula is 1 by r equivalent is equals to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 if i have another one like this another one it would be plus 1 by r3 like that so what would be the solution here we can write 1 r2 and here it would be r2 plus r1 normal calculations and if I inverse it, if I inverse it, then it would be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Simple. We just inverted this. Okay. Because we are finding 1 by R. And now we are finding only the R. So that's why I inverse it. And now it is very simple. So what it tells, if there is two resistor is parallel to it, we can easily find by the short formula. This is the shortage short formula which is r1 times r2 
divided by their sum so product divided by their total sum so what would be the result here so 20 times 20 divided by 20 plus 20 which is like this is 400 and this is 40 so what we get we get 10 so this is the total ohm of these two parallel circuits and there is also one more short form which is if we see the two values are same and there is two resistor 20 20 and there is two resistor also you can directly say that it would be 10 half of them like if there are 30 this one is 30 this one is 30 you can directly say it would be 15 the total equivalent parallel circuit if we just calculate it it would be 15 okay so this is the more shortcut way but most of the cases you need to use this formula if you have two circuit just sum just product of their values and divided by total sum of their values okay so this is the shortcut way to find the equivalent circuit which is really important for parallel okay and series is very simple for if you want to find the series suppose this one we have three resistor here this is five this is five this is five ohm and this is v five volt and if you want to find the current this is very simple total resistor is r which is five 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 which is 15 15 divided 15 which is the equivalent resistor for the series very simple and the voltage is 5 volt so if you can find i is equals to v by r which is 5 divided by 15 which is 1 by 3 okay so this one is really simple so the formula for the parallel is this one this one and for the series if it is in series it is r1 plus r2 plus r3 just sum them up because same current is flowing through this resistor this resistor this resistor there is no divided they are not divided okay they are same but for parallel there is two different direction to current to flow so here we are trying to find the relation between i and r if it is working properly it says that if the resistor is higher then the current flow would be lower if the current is higher then the resistor flow would be lower so here as you can see the voltage source is 55 volt and current would be fall flowing from this position to this direction and this is still current going from the 40 ohm resistor and when it reaches to this position the current divides that's why i'm saying that it is only applicable for the parallel circuit so i'm writing here it is only applicable if the circuit is parallel parallelly connected okay so it must be satisfied so after that it will be divided into two different directions so let me use different kind of color for this so this is i1 suppose and this is i2 which is going from this so kind will be divided across 20 ohm resistor and 60 ohm resistor just understand that this is really important and because it is divided so current will be flowing through two different direction and it would be divided so what you need to do you need to find the current going through this 20 ohm resistor so that's why you use this thing current going through 20 ohm resistor so this is we need to find so what is the formula for this to find this you have to use if you want to find the current going through this 20 ohm resistor you have to use the opposite of it so in the opposite we have 60 ohm resistor so you need to write 60 okay and you have to divide it by the, both the value like you need to add 60 ohm and 20 ohm and you need to divide it by adding it so 60 plus 20 which is 80 and 60 is for if you want to find the value the current going through this 20 ohm resistor you have to use the opposite value which is 60 okay and times the total current total current is i now the problem is we don't know the total current from this circuit okay so that's why we need to use our ohm's law and what you need to find i so i is equals to if you just write it like this way v divided r so total voltage divided by total equivalent resistance so we need to know the total equivalent resistance now so how can we do that so the total equivalent resistor is equals to for the parallel circuit is 20 and 60 so how you can find it just 20 times 60 divided by 20 plus 60 so what we get 
So here, if we calculate it, we get only 15 ohm. And we need to add it with our 40 ohm resistor because these two are parallel. We are just calculating this 20 and 60 and we get 15 ohm. And we need to add 40 if we want to find the total. So if we add 40 plus 15, which is 55. This is total equivalent resistor for this circuit if we solve it. So, okay, so that's why to understand the parallel and series circuit solution and finding the equivalent resistor is really important. We have to first calculate these two and we get the value of 15 ohm and then we need to add 40 because it is in series now. These two are in series with this. So, if we just add this, we get 55 ohm. So, if we just calculate it now, so I is equals to V is actually the voltage source which is 55 volt divided the total ohm we got total equivalent circuit value r value is actually 55 so we get one ampere okay i have like i have taken all the values so that the total output is one ampere because it is easy to calculate okay so i'm not going to use any calculator here so that's why it is really important to make sure you understand the whole concept rather than the value if you just come in here so current through this 20 ohm resistor should be xt divided by 80 times 1 which is if we just calculate 6 divided by 8 which is 3 by 4 okay which is 0 0.75 ampere so 0 0.75 ampere is current is going through from this 20 ohm resistor 0 0.75 ampere okay very simple and now you need to find the current going through the 60 ohm resistor okay so current going through this 60 ohm resistor is you need to take the opposite value now which is 20 on the numerator on the denominator you need to use this total summation the total value which is 80 times the total current which is 1 so we get 2 divided by 8 20 divided by 80 if we just calculate it we get 1 by 4 which is 0 0.25 ampere so it is very logical because your resistor is 60 ohm here you have a 60 ohm resistor because there's a huge amount of resistance there and the current should be flowing very less amount it would be resisted really really hard okay it would be very very hard for it to pass through this so that's why the value is only 0 0.25 ampere very small amount of current is passing through this 60 ohm resistor if you increase it like 80 it would be decreased very very low like 0 0.1 0 0.2 like that on the other hand if you have a 20 ohm resistor which is very smaller compared to 60 and current can pass very easily that's why 0 0.75 which is three fourth of the current is flowing from this uh, 20 ohm resistor so there is less resistance through this so that is the main understanding of the elementary but rudimentary understanding of current divided rule why it is so important to understand so i hope you understand what the concept of cdr is